So Rady's white, and I told you Rady played crazy. You thought I was kidding. Yeah. Gets even crazier. In fact, this reminds me of a Blitz game that my brother in the audience here beat me over 30 years ago. It was about 35 years ago. Man, I got crushed. I remember those Blitz games. Okay, now when I'm black, I play d5 here, and I play a very unusual line. In fact, d4 is even more unusual. Okay. But okay, you take on f4, knight f3, d5. I, I used to play that move too. Takes, and we develop our pieces. c4 is an unusual move, but it's okay. It's explosive. And you get this position, which doesn't really look like a king's gambit. It looks like they're playing a queen's gambit, but somehow white's f-pawn is missing. It's hard to understand. Okay, now, again, when you play the king's gambit, you're sort of exposing your king, which I guess doesn't matter here, because queen h4 is never going to happen. But the good news is we're opening up the f-file. So when white does castle, he's pawns down on f2, blocking his rook. And obviously here, white has a nice development, although his knight is pinned, and he hasn't castled yet. On the other hand, that's not the best development either. Rookie A check, which I would play. Bishop E5. He doesn't want to move his king. He wants to castle. He doesn't mind that his bishop is pinned because it's defended by everything. Bishop E6. So Bishop E6 is a move I would consider, especially after playing the move Rook E8. I don't block my rook like that. Okay, C5, because he's threatening to take C4. Knight G4. That's the move that I liked earlier. Now we're talking. Okay, and castles. So normally, when the guy wins, the guy loses 9 tempi to win the exchange, that's good for you. And you want to attack your opponent's king when these pieces are still here. The knight on f6 was obviously defending the black king, and now it's gone, so white has a lot of attack. And basically, 100, 150 years ago, when people were winning material, they just won material and hope you didn't mate them. Right? And so he took on c3, trading pieces, and knight e3. Okay, so bishop h7 check. Bam! Oh, snap. Now, of course, if your idea is that when you take the bishop, you can check and take the knight, yeah? well, the knight can retreat to f5. So Duras probably saw that, and he's like, what's the problem? You play king h8. What happens on king h7? The answer is, I assume, g4. Okay, queen d2, attacking the knight. And now the move, this is why you paid 10 whole dollars, one of you 15, to get in this class. Queen h6. Queen h6. Rawr. Yeah. Black didn't want to get checkmated, so what did he do? Resign. No, he didn't resign. He resigned later. Uh, F6, F6, yeah. Now what's wrong with the move F6? Looking up there is not going to help you. Never. They're screaming at home. Never play F6. Yeah, they're screaming, never play F6. Yeah. So, <laughs> normally I like to force my opponents to play F6 and F3, because then they lose. On the other hand, if you don't play F6, the, the truth hurts. So you better play F6. Okay? For you at home, if you defend mate this way, you're all taking the rook, and then you're mating him here. That's what you're all doing at home. But I'm going here, because that's mate. And also, I could have mated you by going to any of these squares. But this was much easier for me. Okay, so root g8 doesn't really work, so f6 is the best. And then queen h5, man, there's a lot of attack going on here. Now his queen's not hanging anymore. Here his queen actually is hanging. Man, that's a lot of pieces attacking you. Tough. Okay, bishop g4, tricky. See, that guy was a good player too. What happens on pawn takes? Do I play a bishop discovered check, or do I play knight g5, or do I play knight e5? Hmm. I could check on g6 and take my rook, but I'm still down a piece then. I'm starting to like knight takes e5 threatening knight g6 mate. I'm afraid if I play knight g5, he'll take it, and he'll get like seven pieces for a queen. And I'm sort of worried about that. Knight e5 looks tough to me. Okay, so Duras played bishop g4. And now if you play a discovered check, then I take your queen. So if you play like check or check, okay, so he takes the bishop, he takes the bishop, 
What's the material situation here? Anybody count? Can you do it? No? Blacks up what? A rook? Two? Blacks up a rook. A rook. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And now you can say, well, blacks up a rook, but this is hanging. And I would say, well, this is hanging. I showed you. Okay. But when you're mating somebody and their knight's trapped and these pieces haven't moved, I bet on you. I don't care who's up what. So he just took on f1 and he knows he has enough compensation for an exchange. If you take the bishop, you're going to get crushed because now you're not defending g5 anymore. So you can't, you can't let white do that, because that's just crushing. So either you're going to be up an exchange, where obviously white has enough compensation, or you're going to be up a rook and lose even worse. It's two good choices. Okay, he played knight d7. I Man, I don't believe this move. That looks, it looks like this wins, it looks like this wins. I would be totally shocked if they don't both win. Totally shocked. Knight g5, queen h5, queen f5, every move wins. You can't, there's no defense. Okay, so knight d7, queen h5 check. You guys can guess the next move. They're scratching their head at home, like, I don't know. King there. Okay, let's continue. Let's keep attacking. Morphe would be proud because white's using all of his pieces to attack. Let's use them all more. Looks good to me. I like knight g5. So if you take the bishop, then that's checkmate. So that's probably not a good move. If you take the knight, <coughs> then that's checkmate. So you can't take the bishop and you can't take the knight. So knight g5 is probably the right move. Yeah. Okay, and he played knight f8, and Ben Larson was proud. Yeah. So let's see if there's a defense. Knight f8, wow, everything's made, so there's no defense. Knight f8 was the best. Okay, queen f7 check. You guys can guess the next move. Okay, you change. Okay, now what? How do we win? What would Paul Morphy do? <laughs> Every lecture I say it, use all your pieces to attack. Which white piece isn't attacking anymore? Bishop. Yeah, you could say the bishop. Bishop's on the diagonal with the king, so that's dangerous. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, the rook isn't, uh, yeah, that's not. Yeah, yeah. Rook swing. Yeah, yeah. Man, that's a hard move to stop. I know you can <laughs> yeah. stop it, but it's hard. And you can stop it this way, and then you allow another mate. So, yeah. And this is funny because if you play rook f3 with the same idea, which I'm sure he saw, and I'm sure wins, he was probably like, oh, the queen could go here or here, and he could take my rook if, and, and sack his queen, and then my pieces are all hanging. So after here, he can't do that. If the guy can sack his queen for your rook, or you could checkmate him, probably checkmate him. And then he took the knight, and re or maybe he resigned here, and I just made those moves. That's what I'm guessing. Yeah, so he resigned here. And I guess it's like maiden two, maiden three. Oh, knight g6, x clam. I didn't see that. Stopping rook h4. Man, <laughs> man, that's, uh, you know, if you don't like white, you're in the wrong class. Go, go look at something else. Yeah.